Many of you have already met Chris Milano. He's been here now for, uh, what, two, three weeks? Um, <laughs> oh, only one? Why does it seem like more? I don't know why. A delightful guy and very, very experienced in ministry in the church. And so um, he is here to share his gifts with us and, of course, to gain some experience doing what priests do so that as he prepares for it, he knows that this is the call that really God is holding out for him. And so as we listen to him today, let's really hear his faith being expressed through the words he shares with us to now. When I put my pointer finger together with my thumb, like I'm about to make a snap with a finger, something like this, do you know what this is? It's been used widely now for some time throughout Asia, and it become popularized internationally in the past decade. But maybe this is too small. How about a different gesture? How about when I put together my two hands to make this shape, a heart. These gestures, like you said, symbolizes the heart. It is used to express love or appreciation on the part of the person who's making the gesture. We also see the heart as icons or images on the different social media platforms that we use, like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. When we like the content of the post, we click on the image of the heart. In popular culture and throughout history, the heart has been associated with love. And these gestures and images, however, put us into something, point us towards something much greater than these symbols, you know, more than like. So too in our religious imagination. Today, the church celebrates the most sacred heart of Jesus, and tomorrow, we celebrate the immaculate heart of Mary. These two are what is referred to as the sacred hearts of the sacred hearts. In our faith tradition, we often venerate or honor the relics of a holy person, like the hand of Saint Ignatius or the bones of St. Mary Ann and Damien of Molokai, where I'm from in Hawaii. But what we are venerating today is not the biological organ of the heart, Jesus' heart. Today's celebration is focused on Jesus Christ himself and what the heart of Jesus symbolizes, which is the love Jesus has for humanity. The gospel today is painting a symbolic image for us. At the crucifixion, Jesus is crucified with two other people. The legs of the two were broken so that, they were still, that if they were still alive after the crucifixion, their, their legs would not be able to support them, to support their bodies, thus quickening their death. When the soldiers saw that Jesus had already died, they did not break his legs. Instead, the gospel tells us that a soldier put a lance upward toward Jesus' side, and when the lance went through the, Jesus' body, it pierced its heart, and from it, blood and water flowed out onto the earth. Now hold on to that image for a little bit, and we'll return to it. That blood and water flowed out. In my prayers, I sometimes find myself wondering whether I love God enough or as much as I should. Doubt in whatever quantity of love I have for God quickly seems to be lacking in sufficiency. Thus, I get in my head that my love for God is not enough or not even pleasing to God. But I'm reminded, I am not God. We are not God. We are humans, and the love we have for God will, nowhere, will be nowhere close to the love God has for us. We hear in the second reading today that the love of God surpasses human knowledge. 
So love is not something we quantify, collect data, make analysis, write a report about, and then get an audit from an external source. I'm the kind of person that needs to be reminded from time to time that it's not about me, nor is it about you. Today is one of those days that the church reminds us that the, God's love is not about us. It's about God's love for us. But we cannot, we cannot ignore that we do, indeed, and ought to love God. So what does it mean, then, to love God? In a few minutes, we'll be partaking in this sacred meal. And every time we come to this feast of thanksgiving, we are reminded of the blood of Jesus and the water that is flowing out for all of us. Whether we are able to receive communion in person or make a spiritual communion for those who are joining us online, the love of God is flowing out for all of us. Remember in the gospel, the image painted for us in the scripture that the blood and water is flowing out, it didn't drip. There's a lot. It's an abundance of love. That is God's love for us, an abundance. So when we make an act of commun communion today, might I suggest that to love God is to receive that abundance on the flow of blood and water, and to love God by letting God love you.